Hey, what's going on guys? Dana from ModBot here. I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm super excited in this video to bring you guys a practical laser cutting uh, video. I've done some practical printing videos in the past, which are always a ton of fun. You guys seem to enjoy them where I use my 3D printer to repair, upgrade, or fix something around the house that needs to be done. It's a typically a functional uh, or a you know part that's uh, practical, useful, whatever you want to call it. Well, this has been the first uh, instance where I've gotten to do a project with the laser cutter. I got this machine, the K40, about a month and a half ago. I spent quite a while doing various upgrades to it, which I'm still, of course, working on. I'm never really done with my projects, but uh, I've been able to make some really cool Christmas gifts for people. And recently there was a project that I wanted to do and it seemed much more uh, useful and practical to use a laser cutter versus any of the other technologies I've access to. And I'm uh, super happy that I had access to this technology. So in this video, I'll take you guys through what it took to make this little UV curing light, which is a uh, UV light that is bolted to a wooden frame that I laser cut out all of these little dovetails and has uh, reflective foil tape on the inside. This has been working awesome to cure resin prints. And I wanna show you guys really how easy it was to do and uh, incredibly cost effective. So I hope you guys enjoy, stay tuned. This is the light that I got. It was just uh, roughly, I think, $25 on Amazon. And as you can see, there's a little switch. And when you flip it on, it shines the UV light. So the first thing I did was just go ahead and measured the length and the width of the total uh, body of the light, as well as the length of the width of the portion that uh, actually contained the light. So that way I knew what section I wanted to cut out. Then I headed over to MakerCase, which is a super cool website that makes it really easy to uh, create boxes with your laser cutter. Uh, I decided on a width, a height, and a depth for the box, which in the end I went ahead and did 6 inches by, I believe, 5 inches by, I think, 6 inches in depth, which just seemed, it was kind of a random number, but I figured most of the things that I print will fall within that. You can obviously scale that if needed be. And then you have the ability to choose whether those are the inside or outside dimensions. So I went with outside dimensions. Also, how thick your material is. I was using 1 8 inch wood. I then changed the box to open so that way it wasn't enclosed on all sides. And you've got a couple of options for the edge joints. I went ahead and used uh, some dovetails so that way if you go under finger, uh, the wood kind of goes in and out and interlocks with each other. Uh, there's also another uh, method, the T-slot, where you can actually use a screw and a nut, which is used on a lot of kind of the older acrylic 3D printers, but I preferred this and you know I was going to use wood glue. So once I was happy with that, I downloaded the box plans. You can have it where it says in text like what each of the portions are, but that's not that wasn't needed. And you want to download the DXF file. The SVG file won't let you split them up. So if your laser is not big enough like mine, then that won't work. So if you download the DXF file, then you can go ahead and delete the portions that you aren't going to be cutting at the same time. So I went ahead and deleted all but one because with my laser and the size I chose for the box, I can fit uh, about one and a half or one and three quarters on the build plate. So I just went ahead and opted to do one piece at a time. So I imported them into Lightburn, which is a super awesome piece of software. I changed it to a blue color, which the blue color I have preset to be a cutting profile with a laser power of 60% and a speed of 10 millimeters a second. Once I was happy with that, I placed the wood inside of my K40 laser. I did my best to center the wood as well. Kick the laser on, close the hood, and activated the laser by hitting the laser switch on the K40. Then I went ahead and ran the frame button. The frame button will actually run the job around the area that it's gonna be cutting or working with, so that way you can make sure that you've got your material position correctly. In this case, it wasn't super necessary since um, I'm using a whole piece of wood. And once I saw though that it was roughly centered with my piece of material, I hit the start button and each panel cut out. I did it in three passes, but realistically with my air assist, it was cutting out in two passes easily. So I'll have to tune my laser cutting profile a bit here, but it cut through each piece took about two minutes or so. So it was a really, really quick uh, cut per pass, which is again, why I opted for the laser. I was really happy with where the first piece turned out. So now I just needed to rinse and repeat and do this for the other 
three sides that we're going to make up the outer perimeter of the box. So once I had my four pieces, it was time to focus on the fifth piece, which was going to be the part that I actually mounted the light to. I used the top panel that it was created with the box software and then created two rectangles using the measurements I took of the light earlier. And I added four holes that were four millimeters, which I had measured for the screws that would actually mount the light to the box. So I cut that out. Once that was done, I removed all of the extra pieces and just had that top piece which I was super happy with. I really quick did a little like kind of dry fit to make sure that the screws at least lined up with the uh, mounting screws that I was going to be using that are already on the actual housing and was happy with that. So then the next thing to do was to get some foil tape which I cut down and lined all four sides with so that way when the light shined down if any of that light did not beam down directly onto the print and was reflecting off the sides then the foil tape would help that to bounce down and hit the print. I used this with my previous resin curing bucket that I created and this foil tape which I just picked up from Home Depot seems to do a really good job. So I just did my best to line that up, smooth it out and then cut away the excess tape. Once I had the four pieces together, it was time to actually assemble and glue. So I grabbed some wood glue. Uh, don't scold me for using this wood glue incorrectly. I haven't done any really woodworking at all. So this is all new to me, but I basically took this wood glue from Home Depot, um, put it in between all of the little connecting joints and then press them together. I use this little, um, it's like a foam brush to kind of swipe away all of the excess glue that was sticking out. And then I actually ended up using that to apply the glue to the other ends. It ended up uh, being the easiest way to do so. Then with my hands, I did my best to just kind of press all the pieces together. I also don't have a clamping set up since I'm in my apartment and don't do woodworking. So my solution was to take some tape, wrap it around the box to kind of pressure all of the uh, joints together and for the top portion which is going to be pushing downward I just took the light and set it on top to add some weight to the top of it and I let this dry for about 30 minutes to an hour roughly just to make sure that it had uh, you know dried correctly so once it was done I peeled off the tape and was really happy I was kind of worried because this was only eighth inch wood that it might not be strong enough and might feel flimsy but uh, it actually is plenty strong for um, this small box. So if you do do a larger, much larger box, you might want to consider doing a quarter inch. And so once that was done, I just removed the existing screws that this came with, which luckily was just M4 screws. And I have a ton of M2, M3, and M4 screws. So all I had to do was grab longer screws uh, to kind of make up for that added um, thickness of the wood. And I screwed the faceplate through the box uh, into the faceplate, into the light, and just clamped all four of those or bolted all four of those pieces down until the light was really snug. And it ended up being a really, really solid thing. And I could just pick it up by the light, and when a print is done, just go ahead and set the print uh, on a table or on a surface, drop this on top of it, flip on the light, and Depending on the piece, between 5 to 15 minutes later, it is totally cured. So I'm really happy with this. I actually like it a lot better than my first uh, resin curing bucket that I had created. And uh, I think it turned out awesome. So let me know if you guys have any questions or would like me to maybe upload the plans for this or link you guys to the light and uh, such that I used. But this was a really fun project and I am so stoked that I got to use my laser for something that was functional. And I've got quite a few other ideas for projects that you guys will be seeing in the future that will be incorporating this laser cutter uh, into those projects. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
Uh, again, this was a really cool laser cutting project and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Originally I was gonna paint it, but I actually ended up liking the charred kind of dovetail look. So I think I'm gonna keep it that way, but uh, hopefully this maybe inspired you guys if you are uh, owning a laser cutter or potentially looking at getting one of some project that you maybe can do with the machine and kind of maybe thinking about your laser uh, in a different way when you're you know looking at what to do with the laser cutting machine. If you like this video, don't forget to smack the like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe for more awesome videos such as this one. And if you do enjoy the content so much that you want to support my channel, uh, links will be down below to my Patreon. I really appreciate it. And I've got some really cool stickers and some awesome rewards and potentially even some laser stuff that will be making it on its way to my Patreon. So on that note, I hope you guys are all doing fantastic and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace guys.